It's time now for Mental Health Matters with your host, Lisa Reimer. Mental Health Matters is graciously underwritten by New Vision Eye Center, world-class eye care on the Treasure Coast. New Horizons thanks Dr. Paul Minotti, Dr. Stephen Tate, Dr. Robert Reinauer, and Dr. David O'Brien. Now, here's Lisa Reimer. Mental Health Matters. Yes, emotional well-being is vitally important, but it's more than just that. Mental health issues can impact a person's physical health. It can influence their behavior and even dictate the course of an entire life. Hello, my name is Lisa Reimer, and I'm the host of Mental Health Matters and a communications officer for New Horizons of the Treasure Coast in Okeechobee. And if you haven't heard of us, we are the most comprehensive mental health and addictions recovery agency in this region. We have nine offices across four counties, and we serve 14,000 children and adults annually, regardless of their ability to pay. We have inpatient units um, at our play, at our facility in Fort Pierce, and we have outpatient offices, again, throughout the four county area. Today's Mental Health Matter is the Opioid Awareness Month as proclaimed by the Florida courts. And here in the studio with me to talk about opioid, the opioid epidemic and hopefully recovery is Judge Michael Lynn from the 19th Circuit Court, Deb Dreyer, who is our New Horizons Chief Clinical Officer, and we have Carrie Lester, who is with the Substance Awareness Center of Indian River County. Thank you so much for being here. Um, let's begin with what is the Opioid Awareness Week. Um, it's different than the opioid, the uh, international overdose awareness, which happens sometime at the end of August. This is something that was just initiated by the courts here in Florida, correct? That's correct. Uh, Chief Justice Kennedy of the Florida Supreme Court uh, issued an order which uh, proclaimed for the Florida court system that the month of July actually is Opiate uh, Awareness Month. Um, and, and he made some observations, and one of those observations that struck with me in his proclamation was the fact that um, in the state of Florida, uh, accidental death by opioid overdose is higher than an accidental death by a car crash. Mm -hmm which is uh, incredible to me uh, as a circuit judge uh, to see how those numbers have changed. So. You know, um, I watched the movie Beautiful Boy recently, which is about uh, a young man who is recovering from opioid addiction. And I saw that it has become the number one, the leading cause of death in people under the age of 50. So we have suicide as the second leading cause of death for, or excuse me, yes, the second leading cause of death for 10 to 34 year olds, and now drug overdose as the leading cause of death for 35 to 54 year olds. That's just incredible. And yet we hardly talk about it because of stigma. And that's, and, and that's true. Um, I think, uh, candidly, my observations have been a, 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 as a circuit judge now since uh, January, uh, presiding over the drug court here in Indian River County, um, that it is something that touches a significant amount of people in Indian River County. Um, prior to that, I was a, an assistant state attorney for 14 years, um, prosecuting um, and handling cases uh, that dealt with op opioids in general, um, watching the kind of the, the change in the way uh, cases are handled um, and also being involved in the drug court uh, program prior to that um, as a prosecutor. And um, I think there is a lot of stigma to that. Um, but I think if if everyone was candid, there would be a significant amount of people that opioid um, addiction has touched, either through a relative that they know, someone else that they know, or um, some type of tragic death that they've been aware of um, through someone that they, they know. Um, and that stigma is is something we need to get past as a, as a society, um, and we need to start focusing, especially for those that are amenable to treatment. And in our, in our criminal justice system, we have tools and mechanisms in place right now um, to help people um, through our treatment court 
uh, programs that mm -hmm. we have. And really, it started back in the 80s uh, with the uh, therapeutic uh, uh, court movement with starting with drug court, um, which is what I preside over. <clears throat> and um, and it is expanded into mental health court, into into veterans court as well, which deals with mental health issues, but along with addiction issues. Um, for those individuals uh, that, that frankly are, are low level offenders, nonviolent offenders, um, they can come into our courtroom and not be treated uh, the same way as you would had you just committed a, a regular felony and you would go to a, a felony court, for instance. Um, you know, Florida statutes are very clear. Those individuals that commit violent crime, commit those type of crimes, primary purpose of the criminal justice system is to punish those individuals. Um, certain amount of offenders are, are, are low-level, nonviolent drug addicts. And um, for those that don't have a significant criminal history or not convicted felons, they can come to drug court where we offer them, a, instead of punishment, we offer them rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. Now, that rehabilitation comes with accountability. As I, as I tell everybody in my courtroom, um, the, the uh, defendants that come into my courtroom, I tell them, well, you, you're going to have two things when you come here. You're going to have a drug court team that cares about you because there are a team of people. And you're also going to have a judge that cares about you. But I care about you enough that I'm going to hold you accountable. Mm -hmm. And I, and I do sanction individuals that um, perhaps don't take their treatment seriously because it's important for, for me as a judge. If I'm doing my job, it's important for me to give those defendants the opportunity to rehabilitate. Um, and those uh, defendants, specifically for me, the important thing for me is that they get the tools to be a successful and productive citizen in our community. Um, and that's where... I think our role is, 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 is in drug court is to provide um, those that are amenable to the treatment, to provide them treatment so that they can come back and be productive members of our community. Uh, now, um, Deb, we at New Horizons do mental health court. Do we also do drug court? There are drug courts in other counties. We don't do it at New Horizons. Okay. It's, it's a county related okay. thing. So it depends on the county on whether they have drug court uh, or, and or mental mental health court. So well. we've seen in mental health court that level of accountability has um, reaped gains. You know, mm -hmm. the the people returning to jail has dropped astronomically. I think, I think the big piece of what you're saying and what I hear you saying is when you talked about wrapping that treatment treatment team mm -hmm. around around the client because it it, it it's not easy to get through um, an opioid use disorder. It, it, it at first you have to go through the medical withdrawal. Um, we know that there are, there are serious brain changes that take place when people have opioid use disorder. Many of them developed it not because they went to the streets first, but because they were first prescribed mm -hmm. um, the opioids. So it, you have to provide the counseling while you do the brain chemistry changes as well. So having that system wrapped around around the individual so that they can get maybe medication assisted treatment or appropriate detox um, and then have the counseling that they need and then eventually to get probably to the trauma that got them in that boat mm -hmm. in the first place. And we is, talk a lot about really important. childhood so trauma. Mm -hmm. I, I, I love drug courts are amazing things. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a great thing that you're doing. I think Judge Lynn hits on a really important point yeah. around the accountability. Mm -hmm. our, our agency works closely with the Indian River County Drug Court. We are part of the team and the staffing. And what we find is so many of the offenders... Um, although they may initially resist, they really are, just like our children, are, are, are thriving for that structure and that accountability. And when we talk about what's happening, when we look at it as brain disease, and we know that brain needs stabilization, um, and that, that accountability and that structure is so important. And so we put the wraparound services in place. We hold them accountable to what they're capable of doing here and now in the moment. Um, and we wrap ourselves around them. And, and tell us a little bit about what those wraparound services are. So. Uh, 
it's the, the the treatment component. So first we need to decide what, what level of care is appropriate. Does somebody need a medical detox? Does somebody need a placement in a residential treatment? Do they need a day treatment service, an outpatient treatment service? And the treatment providers who participate on the team use um, ASAM or um, uh, American Society of Addiction Medicine criteria to determine that placement and put people in the appropriate level of care. And then we can't stop there. We have to offer medication-assisted treatment if indicated for an opiate use disorder or an alcohol use disorder. We have to take a look at housing. We have to take a look at uh, financial um, uh, uh, impediments. And we really have to take a look at how can we build recovery capital? How, what do they have for recovery support? Um, do they have a support system? Who are the people that they have? What's the environment that they're living do in? Do they have therapists? Do they have case mm -hmm. managers? Do they need psychiatric referral? And so we have to look at the whole person, the whole individual. It really even a standard of care, the importance of not only connecting with medical services, but making sure that um, people with substance use disorders are connected with the appropriate dental services, because that's often a big relapse trigger. And then uh, the accountability is making your your appointments and testing, correct? Mm -hmm. Testing's a big thing. Mm -hmm. and, 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 um, and, and being able to get the data, you know, spe specifically with drug court, um, when I first came in there, we were having an issue getting our testing results um, close in time with when we were holding court. Um, because every, you know, just to kind of give a broad overview of drug court for those that, that, that don't understand what drug court is, um, we meet twice a month. We're actually going to meet tomorrow at 1030. I'll be holding drug court in Indian River County, and it's open to the public. Anybody can come and watch. Um, it's a little bit unique. Uh, it's different than the criminal courtroom in the fact that um, we are more um, looking towards rehabilitation of the offender rather than that punishment aspect. Um, but what you'll see is um, we'll call each individual that's in, in, that has qualified, that has pled into, or they did a change of plea, they've come into my courtroom, and now they're going through the process. So um, part of that is... Um, they come in every other week. We take a look and see how they've been testing. What, have they tested positive? Have they had a relapse? Um, that type of thing. And it's important to get that data um, as close in time to the actual court because the sanction should be as close as possible to the time of the, the relapse, for lack of a better way of putting it. So um, we were able to fix that, I, and, and like today I got an email. I have data sheets on, on all of the drug court members um, that are in there. I will go through them uh, tonight and tomorrow morning so I'll know, okay, this individual did great the last two weeks, or perhaps the last four weeks they've done great. And, um, and we'll positively reward that. We'll, we'll you know, congratulate them, keep rooting on for them. Um, which is something you don't necessarily see from a, a from a, a judge normally. Most mm -hmm. people that are impression of a judge is we sit there in robes and you know we're grumpy, judge. right? We're grumpy <laughs> um, and and Judgmental. we judge people, you know, and we yell at them and, uh -huh. and that type of thing. And and drug court it should be a different environment, and you know, and and there's there is definitely a place for a judge to punish criminal offenders. Mm -hmm. Um, and there are times where I have to do that as a, as a drug court judge, but I understand it with this assignment, my role is different. My role is more to be a positive influence to encourage people to go forward. Um, but that being said, you know, unfortunately, there are those that don't take the program seriously and they, they just get sentenced and sent out of the program. And, and that hurts me that, you know, I, I want to see them succeed for our community, for the 19th Circuit. Um, we want these individuals back as productive members of our society. That's what the average taxpayer pays for, and that's what they, they deserve. They're also mothers, fathers, yes. you know, grandparents. Yes. There are employees. You know, these are, they're not just drug addicts. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and also part of my assignment, totally aside, is dependency court. You know, and, and, and I see every, every day. I see parents walk away from their own children, young children, and no longer, and would rather have their parental rights terminated because of drug addiction. And it breaks my heart. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what drug court, and that's what we're here to do, is to try and help that issue. Okay, we're going to take a short break. Um, when we come back, we're going to talk about medication-assisted treatment and some of the other 
of co course components of this uh, this month and what we're doing. Hi, I'm Cindy, the proud owner of Cindy's Cleaning Service. I consider it a privilege to be welcomed to people's homes and offices to make them shine. We do it all from ceiling fans to floors, dusting, and windows. With Cindy's Cleaning Service, you get quality cleaning and affordable rates. We are also licensed and insured. Please give us a call and we will give you a free estimate. Cindy's Cleaning Service, 569-9348. At Cindy's Cleaning Service, the Lord is our strength. The Green Marlin, check out their specials all week long. Like Monday, buy a salad bar, get one free, 11 to 3. After 4, get a whole Maine lobster, 16.95 while they last. Wednesday night is Buck a Shuck, dollar oyster nights from 4 to 7. Prime rib dinners every Thursday through Saturday while they last. The Green Marlin, the biggest and best all-you-can-eat Sunday brunch, too. Family, friendly seafood and more, 14.75 US 1 and Vero. A fresh experience. Go where the locals go. The Cataract Institute at New Vision Eye Center offers the most advanced technology available for patients with cataracts. Gentle, bladeless, computer-guided cataract removal. Our advanced laser system is designed to deliver the best visual results with unsurpassed accuracy and efficiency. No two eyes are the same, not even yours. That's why we use the Varian Image Guided System to obtain a fingerprint of your eye before your cataract procedure. Doctors Minotti and Tate offer the safest and most efficient technique for cataract removal and permanent intraocular lens implant. Patients are personally counseled on the best approach for their needs and lifestyle. There are multifocal lenses that allow for distance vision and reading or toric lenses to correct astigmatism. Call New Vision Eye Center for a consultation or second opinion. Your eyesight deserves world-class eye care. Visit newvisioneyecenter.com or call 772-257-8700. That's New Vision Eye Center in Vero Beach. If you operate a small business, you need services like payroll, tax compliance, HR tools, and other resources. You need Complete Employee Solutions. Bureau Beach has a team of professionals, including Anthony Sammons, Matt McCain, and Jennifer Comer, who saw the need for competent payroll, HR, and employee leasing services. Call Complete Employee Solutions at 772-978-7277 or visit their website at completeemployeesolutions.com. Welcome back to Mental Health Matters. I'm Lisa Reimer. If you're just joining us, we're here today speaking about the Florida Courts Opioid Awareness Month. That's July. And we're talking to Judge Michael Lynn, Deb Dreyer, from, who's our Chief Clinical Officer at New Horizons, and Carrie Lester, who's with the Substance Awareness Center of Indian River County. So we just got finished speaking about um, what the differences in the opio the drug courts that you run mm -hmm. well that ev everyone runs in florida they're they're similar um so how do they differ again from normal court okay um and and i'll do my best to give a, a, as best a description to this for the folks that aren't used to this if first of all if you meet the criteria to qualify for drug court you're a nonviolent low level offender that's not a com convicted felon You'll come into my courtroom, and if you decide you want to participate, you'll change your plea, meaning you're, you're admitting um, to the, the crime that you've committed. And then what happens is, is you are then um, evaluated for treatment. You are immediately start drug testing, and um, you will go through a very extensive rehabilitation program. And you'll come back into my courtroom every other week or every four weeks. Um, and I'll check in on you. I'll check those reports and check to make sure you're complying with that. Um, the offenders that have relapse, which we, it's not um, unusual to have relapses, um, they will get sanctioned. They may get sanctioned to community service hours. They may get sanctioned um, to go work at the dump um, for a day. Um, if it's serious enough, they may get sanctioned and get sent to jail. Um, but um, the offenders that aren't serious about the program, don't want to participate, lie to me, that type of thing. We just go ahead and sentence them and send them out of our courtroom. But the ones that are successful get their charges dismissed. And the program lasts for at a minimum of a year, usually a little bit longer, usually a year and a half. Um, it rarely gets up to two years. But the, it's, a, it's, it's a much more difficult program to get through. 
from an aspect of what your obligations are than just going on probation. Um, but at the end of it, they get their charges dismissed, which is that carrot. But the important thing for me, which is bigger than um, the dismissal, is to give them the tools, again, to be productive, mm -hmm. to get, be able to manage their um, the, the problem of addiction that they have in their life, to always recognize that it's there, and to know how to cope, and to know how to handle, and to give them the resources to, um, to, to handle their addiction. Um, that to me is the bigger issue because that, pre that prevents recidivism in our community um, and, and that prevents a lot of um, additional criminal activity that prior to having this program, we had it in our community. Um, and, and that's the important thing to me as, as, as a judge. Um, so, You know, I have heard uh, I mean, that addiction is, of course, hard to overcome, but that an opioid addiction in particular, it, that the people who are withdrawing, they feel like they're going to die. Mm -hmm. Do these people go cold turkey that are in drug court for I, opioids? Again, we do an assessment and evaluation to put them in the right level of care. So mm -hmm. if somebody is physically addicted to an opiate, we mm -hmm. would recommend that they go do a medical detox mm -hmm. where they will receive some sort of um, comfort medications to help them through that really brutal withdrawal process. And at that point, they will probably be spoken to about uh, medication-assisted treatment, mm -hmm. which um, science is really showing us the value. Research has shown us a significant uh, reduction in relapse rates for people who utilize medication-assisted treatment. And there's different types of medications. They work a little bit differently in the brain. but. The importance of medication-assisted treatment is it's stabilizing the brain so that our offenders or our people uh, entering into recovery can actually engage in the drug court program. They can engage in the counseling that we're engaging in. So they're not into. constantly fighting the craving. Correct. And so th there's different medications available. We have the Florida legislature has put a lot of money aside to help make sure that these medications are available to all with or without insurance. Um, and um, what what happens is the the withdrawal is it can be so painful in the beginning and discomfort discom uncomfortable and it can be prolonged and what happens with medication assisted treatment is if the med if if you take a medication that is actually sitting on the opiate receptor it will block cravings and um, and help people then engage into into recovery and the different medications work a little bit differently Deb can probably speak to that a little bit better than me um, but we have several types of medication assisted treatment um, full antagonists that uh, you know different types that are going to um, interact with that receptor differently and so do they do the counties mostly use the same I and mean, we're using at New Horizons for the medication assisted treatment um, Methadone is one. Mm -hmm. uh, you just spoke of the, the full agonist. Mm -hmm. So methadone is an opiate. It acts as an opiate. The thing about methadone is it's uh, federally regulated, very federally regulated. So methadone, um, you have to go to the clinic every day. Suboxone is what is primarily prescribed, Suboxone or Subutex. Um, those two are, are made available through grants and money from uh, the state. They uh, block the receptors, make you kind of feel normal, but they don't get you, for lack of a better word, high. Mm -hmm. And then there's Vivitrol, which is an absolute blocker, which um, that way if you do the heroin or whatever, you won't get any effect from it at all. So it's sort of a complete antagonist. Okay, so this show we're doing a little bit different. It's an hour-long show. So if you're listening to us on air, um, you can listen to the second part next week, uh, next Thursday, and or next Sunday. And if you're listening to us uh, stream live or uh, video on Facebook at New Horizons Mental Health, um, then we're going to take another short break, and we'll come back and have part two of our show. So um, we'll see you in just a moment. <laughs> 